This is how God, number one, deals with me. Number two, this would be how we are to raise our children. This is how we're supposed to do it. God, when they say there's no manual to life, that's a lie. There is one. You're holding it in your hand. The Bible is written by the one who invented life. And above all the psychiatrists and doctors and specialists out there in the world, God is above them all because He understands children better than anybody. He understands about being a father. He understands about having good children and having stubborn, stubborn children. God's had them all. God has had to deal with it all. And God is wise. And God will show us as parents how we are to raise our children. And the Bible said in Psalm 22, 6, Train. Train. That word means something. It does not say be mean to them. It does not say abuse them. It does not say take out your anger on them. Amen. It does not say that. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, the Bible says. You can be too mean. You can be too hard on them and not be loving. They'll grow up hate you. Or they'll grow up to turn out to be worse than you. But he said, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I submit to you today that the biggest problem that we have in American culture is not what the children are doing, it's what the parents are not doing. That's the problem. I ran a Christian school for about 13 years. And I'm telling, listen, I'm going to be dead honest. I had more problems out of the church families than I did out of the lost families. No kidding. One of the in the early years when we had our school, we had, we had a lot of families coming in. And we had a group of families from a, a, an unnamed, big, charismatic church out on Z Highway. I will not give the name. But they believe they have victory all the time. And I had more problems out of those parents. Because somebody taught them in that church that if their child said to them, Mommy, I'm sorry then you don't have, you don't punish them, you act like God does, you just forgive them and move on. And I'm here to tell you, children, that foolishness is bound in their heart. And they will learn quickly to play that game with mom and dad. If I want to get out of trouble, if I did something wrong, all I got to do is pretend I'm sorry and say I'm sorry, then I don't get any punishment over it, and everything will be fine. And I'm telling you that those kids know what, they know how to play that game. And so they brought their little brat children here to this school. And when I had to, when I had to punish them in some way, I knew for a fact that by the end of the day, I was going to be in trouble. I'd get a phone call. My little Johnny said this and said, you gave him a whipping and he said it wasn't his fault and he said blah, blah, blah. And I had a parent one time, I'm not kidding you. Their daughter got caught cheating during school. And I knew it. I knew what would happen. So I told that young girl, I said, I want you to write out in detailed form exactly what you did here today and why you're in trouble. And I made her write it out and sign her name to it. Sure as a world, five o'clock that evening, I got a phone call from that mom. My daughter said that she got in trouble and she said it wasn't her fault. She said she wasn't doing anything wrong and I don't know why you come down so hard on her. And I reached in my desk and I pulled that letter out. I said, I'm going to read something to you. And I read the letter verbatim to her. And you could have heard a pin drop over the phone. And finally she turned, oh, you're in trouble. I knew better. I knew that girl wasn't going to get nothing. We got word one day, 12-year-old girl in the school, she told other girls in the school that the next day when her mama went to work, she was going to have her boyfriend come over to the house and be alone together. 
Some of the kids told me about it. I waited till the next morning. Sure enough, the girl didn't show up. So I called the mom at work and I said, where's your daughter today? Oh, she's real bad sick. I said, well, let me tell you what I heard. What I heard was that she was going to pretend to be sick and her boyfriend's over at your house right now alone with her. Oh, no, my daughter would never do that. Okay. Believe what you want. The younger daughter came in with a piercing on her nose, which was for expressly in the rules. You're not to have, not to have that. So she put a band-aid over it, but went to the bathroom and showed all the other girls, look what I got. Don't, don't tell Mr. Hogger. So sure enough, run down the hall. So and so's got a, got a piercing in her nose. So she come down the hall and I called her in. I said, what, what's wrong with, the, what's wrong with your nose there? Nothing. Take that band-aid off. She took it off. And I said, you go in that bathroom, take that out before I do. And I said, she was like 11 years old. You can't get that without mom's permission. Mom knew nothing about it. So I'm here to tell you. As parents, I promise you, you will pay for not raising your children right. You'll pay. They will give you grief. You will worry nonstop. You, you will throw out and shell out thousands of dollars to cover for those children. As adults, you'll pay. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Father, I need you to teach it. Because I have already indicted myself. There is no way in the world that I'm capable of preaching this the right way. I've made too many mistakes. So Father, lest I be found a hypocrite in front of my own people, God, would you teach this lesson to us today and make us hear it. And Father, you try to train us. And Lord, I need more training. I'm not... I'm not who I want to be. I'll need more correction, more training to gain wisdom so that I do right, lest I be found a hypocrite. And Father, I don't want that. And Father, I, I ask God that you give me wisdom concerning my children. God, that you give me wisdom concerning all my grandchildren. They look up to Papa. And Father, they need me to live right. I pray, dear God, that you would give us a little conviction today. And Father, you would, you would train us, teach us, Father, how to do right, how to stay away from wrong. Father, just give us grace and give us blessings and help us, Father. Learn, teach us today. And we pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Matthew chapter 3, verse 9. Jesus said, And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. And here's the Jews saying this to Jesus. We have Abraham to our father. They're very cocky. They're very arrogant. But they are children. They are children of Belial who they are. They're children of Satan. And they're boasting and bragging about who they are and who their parents are. And I will say something to my family. Don't you ever think that you're automatically in for sure going to heaven because your daddy's pastor of the church. Don't you ever think that. And I want all my children to hear it. All my grandchildren to hear it. All my sons-in-law to hear it. I want everybody to hear it. Don't you ever think that daddy's faith is good enough to get you in. Jesus said... God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. 
Who do you think you are? God is saying to us. And in that manner, all of us can get full of pride. We can get cocky. We can say, well, bless God, we're, we're, we're for Trump and we're for guns and we're for the King James Bible. We can do no wrong. And that's arrogant. And God is able to bring in Mexicans, Muslims, Orientals and everybody else into this nation and have them take over. God is able to do that if we get too cocky. Can I hear God's people say, in fact, that is exactly what God said to Israel back in Deuteronomy chapter 28. He said, if you will not abide by my statutes and my judgments and my rules, the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shalt be brought down very low. Can we not see that happening in this country? The, the key to this verse is God is able to raise up children. You listen to that part of this message. God knows how to raise children, does He not? God has had a son for eternity. God's had a son. God knows how to do it. Let me tell you a little bit about training and what it really is. Yelling is not training. Screaming at children and cursing them is not training. Here's, here's what I was taught one time. Some of you grandparents, you know this, because when, when the grandkids come over, you start stuff and putting it up high where they can't reach it. And this man said... You take a two-year-old, a three-year-old child, sit them down, or a year old. Get the most valuable thing in your house and set it in front of them. What is that child, by instinct, by nature, what is that child going to do? He said, they're not going to like that. They're going to get mad. You know what they're going to do? They have a will like a wild horse. The will can be broken without breaking the spirit. And he said pretty soon that arm will stay put. They will learn you don't touch that. Now if you think that's wrong, you think that's mean, you listen to me. God put Adam and Eve in the garden... He gave them all the trees of the whole garden. Every fruit, every vegetable, everything in that garden was free. God put the tree of life in the midst of the garden and they ate of the tree of life freely. Freely. Then God took the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He did not set it up on the high shelf where they could not get to it. Where did he put it? In the midst of the garden. And he said, don't touch it. Don't eat of it. Sorry, that's what Eve said. God said to Adam, don't eat of it. Now, here's another lesson. Your children are always, the devil is always going to find a way to get to them to fill their mind with ideas that are contrary to what mom and dad told them. Amish children learn how to do evil, don't they? Mennonite children learn how to do evil. The devil will always find a way to get to your children. You will never be able to stop that. So you know what you do? Train them. Teach them. My wife set our children in the sanctuary of the church, not in the nursery. She's got a wooden spoon sitting right there. Liam, is there a wooden spoon there in that pew right there? Of you? It's somewhere. Courtney, you got one? Where's our wooden spoon at? There it is. You know what that is? Wave that up in the air. 
You know what that is? That's a rod. That's a rod. And my wife raised our children to sit in two and a half, three hours of church service without fussing and screaming and kicking and crying and demanding their rights all the time. And she did it with a wooden spoon. Didn't she, Alicia? That's training. Where's our military guys at? Raise your hand. They took you dumb country boys. They took you children and taught you how to be killing machines and live through it. Whereas you showed up, you knew nothing. We had a young boy here that was uh, going to go join the Marines and I was real proud of him, you know, and I was a Sunday school teacher and he come the day before, the day before he's getting on the bus, he comes in, he's got his head down like this. I said, what's the matter, son? He said, I just don't feel motivated today. I don't know about this. And I said, I guarantee you, Tuesday morning, 5 o'clock, you're fixing to be motivated. <laughs> Motivation's coming. Is, am I right? They trained you to do things, number one, you were not capable of doing. Number two, that you didn't know how to do. Number three, they trained you to survive in an unsurvivable state. God is doing the same thing. Those who are His children. He's training you. Number, and I want you to think about this. When the Europeans came over to this continent... For the next 200 years, what was the number one killer of Native American tribes in this land from 1600 on? What was the number one killer of the Indian tribes in this nation? Disease. Why? What? How do you get, you go to the clinic and get a shot? Is that how you get immune? What do they tell you about when you get mumps? If you get mumps, what will happen? You'll never get them again. Ever. Do you know why? Your body faced an enemy. It learned the enemy. Learned how to defeat it. And you never have to worry about it again. You see what I'm saying? So, it was in my nature with my girls especially to keep them away from every part of the world we don't watch that on TV we don't look at that we don't listen to that and my wife said I don't think that's wise I said well why not she said at some point they're not going to live under our roof anymore and they're going to need to know how to fight for themselves. What we know is coming their way. And she was right. So had the Native American or Indian tribes in this nation already had dealt with mumps, smallpox, different fevers like that, they would have survived. But I mean, we slaughtered whole tribes with diseases that they had never, ever incurred before. And their body did not know how to fight it. It is our responsibility as parents to train our children. They are going to see naked bodies at some point. They are going to hear curse words at some point. They're going to see people drinking alcohol and looking like they're doing well with it at some point. They're going to be invited. Somebody, somebody, I, there was a guy that worked up where man works in a mechanic shop. And I took one look at this punk and I said, he's trouble. And sure enough, 
Come to find out, he had already offered Caleb methamphetamine. He just said, here, try this. He, wouldn't, he didn't sell it to him. He didn't say, hey, you got 20 bucks? No. He offered it to him. Why do you offer it to him for free the first time? So he'll pay for it after that. And from what I heard, my son said, are you crazy? I don't want that stuff. Yes! Because me and Caleb would sit and watch cops. And I'd say, Caleb, see that? see that? See that guy right there? That's what drugs does. See that gal that can't stand still and she's shaking her legs? She's talking 90 miles an hour? That's what methamphetamine does. You are to train them. Just like the child reaching for the expensive vase trained them that that hurts. That's not child abuse. And let me tell you something. God's never abused you either. So you're wondering why you're going through what you're going through. You wonder why God let you slip into some of that sin that you slipped into. You're wondering why God let you do that. God's teaching you. God's training you. If... Listen, if you're not saved, go for it. Go get drunk. Go get high. Go chase whatever it is you want to chase. If you are not saved, because you're going to hell anyway. That's mean, but that's the truth. If, however, you are a child of God, yes, God will allow you to get into that stuff. Yes, God will confront you with it. But God, in His almightiness, will withhold most of it from you. What is it? What is a? Um, what is a? Um, um, what am I thinking of? A flu shot or whatever? What is that? An inoculation? What is that anyway? What's in that? Aside from poison and mercury and all that junk, what's what else is in there? A copy of the virus. So that your body says, this is trouble. Now that we know what it is, we're going to go looking for it. And everywhere we find it, we're going to destroy it. It works. Now I know some of you are not, you're against vaccinations, you're against this. I understand that, I get that. But I'm telling you, when I had to go to Kenya, first time, I must have got 15 shots, Wayne. They stuck me with, and I hate shots, they stuck me with everything. You know what? To me, it was worth it because I need to go to Kenya. And I definitely don't want to end up like Alicia ended up the first time in the hospital with malaria. That's training. God's training you. Genesis chapter 2. Here's my point. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And verse 16, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. You see, God's preparing you for something. And God did not hide the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He did not put it up on a high mountain. He did not put it on the moon somewhere. It's not sitting on Mars somewhere. It's right there in front of you. And God's business in life as your father. Listen, hey, listen, I lost you now. God's purpose in your life is to train you to stay away from sin. To let sin hurt you so bad. That you will never want that ever again. That's training. So I'm going to read some Psalms to you. Psalm 144 verse 1. Blessed be the Lord my strength. Now rule number one. You cannot do this without God. We have already started our addictions Bible study. We started it just with a few people. Because I'm just kind of feeling, I'm getting my training wheels on this thing. I've never done anything like this before. And I'm kind of starting to get the hang of it. But we've already started this. We need that. And I've said this. 
What good would it do for you to be dry of alcohol 50 years and die and go to hell? Shoot, if I was, if I was, that was me, I'd just go ahead and drink. Eat, drink, be married for tomorrow you may die. I mean, if you don't plan on going to heaven, live it up. Enjoy it. Have your best life now. Eat all the cake before the meatloaf. Break all the rules and get her done and do it. Get, I mean, get, get high, get drunk. Get it on fast and hard and mean because you're going to die and you spend eternity in hell. But if you're a child of God, God will allow you to get into a portion of it and slip tiny chains of bondage on your hands until you learn how to get free. That's training. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Hey! You know, I'm going to show you how to do it now. Ready? Hey, it's training time. Ready? This is how my hands war. God, I can't do this. God, I need help. God, I, I just I fall every time. God, I get into it. God, I hate it. That's how your hands fight. This is how your fingers do war. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The heaven for height and the earth for depth and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver. There shall come forth a vessel for the finer. That's your wisdom right there. You know what? You're full of dross. You're full of dross. And God has to refine you and take you through the fire in order to get that dross out. So you are, you are a vessel fit for the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. Psalm 18, verse 34. Turn there. Hey, I don't hear your fingers fighting. That's what it sounds like. That's that spiritual warfare right there. Do you know that I take the same medicine y'all take? Do you know I'm the doctor that gives you the same prescription that I must take myself? So that if you come to me and say, does this work? Is this any good? I'll say, I take it. I take it. I take it twice a day, three times a day. Sometimes I have to take massive doses of it. But that's me. That's my nature. I, don't, I can't take one ibuprofen. Like salt. Psalm 18, he teaches my hands to, to war so that a, listen to this, so that a bow of steel is broken in my arms. Who's shooting the fiery darts at you with that bow of steel? Ron, he's teaching you how to duck. He's teaching you how to dig a, a foxhole. He's teaching you how to strafe as you run by. Did I say that right? So I wasn't in the military. I thought about it. Okay. I would have joined the Navy. Because at least you're guaranteed to have a dry bed every day. Unless that one time when your bed is wet and sleeping is not your biggest concern right then. Right? You ever had a wet bed sleep in, Wayne? You bet. Here comes the snow. Here's what I'm telling you. The devil's always going to have that bow of steel going after you. He on me, he's chasing you. He's running after you like Pharaoh chasing you down to the Red Sea. And he's got his fiery darts. And God is training you. When you get mad enough, you'll run over to the devil and you'll take that bow of steel and you'll break it and say, Devil, you leave me alone. And by the way, stay away from my family too, or I'll get you. I took an axe down in the woods. The day after my granddaughter died. And I took an axe to some trees, and I stood there with an axe in my hand, a sharpened axe in my hand, and a dog, pit bull, come running over to me in the woods. 
And he was just on the other side of our barbed wire fence on somebody else's property. God's, God's teaching me. God had me down in the woods to teach me something. And when that dog come over to that fence, I squared up to him like this with an axe in my hand. I hate pit bulls. I hate pit bulls. They're mean. They're killers. Now, if that was some chihuahua, I'd have just run over and chopped him. If that was a cat, I hate cats anyway. But that was a pit bull. And I did. I squared up like this. And God put it in me and I said, Go on out of here! Huh! Like that. And that pit bull looked up at me and turned and run off in the woods. And God said, Mike, that's why you're down here. I want to teach you that. And I looked in those woods and I looked around at every devil that was standing down there. And I said, that goes for you too. You get out of my family. Now. God was training me. Family, my family, listen to your daddy. God was training us. He was teaching us. We have an enemy called death. And it's not something to play around with. And God is training us to defeat death. Are you listening to your preacher this morning? Turn to Judges chapter 3. Judges chapter 3. We got about five inches out there already. Your car's covered, so there ain't no use in you leaving now anyway. No, I'm just teasing. Judges chapter 3, verse 1. Turn your Bible there. I want, hey, I want to hear your fingers. Going to war now. Come on. Start loading your weapons. You'll start, listen, you'll soon learn why the liberals are so bent on stealing all of our guns away from us. You'll figure it out. You'll never vote for another Democrat in your life. When you find out why they're trying to take your guns away from you. Are you listening? Are you listening? Judges chapter 3 verse 1. Why do you think 9-11 happened? Why do you think we had a stupid Muslim terrorist? Where was it down in Pensacola? In the naval base. He was a Navy man. Are we stupid? They, they just commissioned and started building a Navy warship called the USS Harvey Milk. Do you know who that is? He was that sodomite city councilman in San Francisco that was a pervert. And we're naming a warship after him. Are we insane? I'm afraid God's going to have to teach this nation some hard lessons. Why are all these things happening? Why, aren't, why isn't all the bad people going away? Listen to your Bible. Judges 3 verse 1. Now these are the nations which the Lord left. Who left them there? God did. To prove Israel by them. This is your training. This is why God didn't take your cigarettes away. This is why God didn't take your whiskey away. This is why God didn't take your marijuana away. This is why God didn't take your Playboy magazines away. This is why God left them in your life. Even as many of Israel had not known all the wars of Canaan. Yeah, your daddy and your granddaddy fought the war. But you didn't. You don't know anything about it. When the war starts, I'm standing behind Ron and Wayne and Joe. I'm behind you, boys, all the way. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I'd have to follow you guys. Right? You guys know how to fight. I don't. So God, listen to your preacher. God left enemies in my life. And he wouldn't take them away. Verse 2. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war. At the least such as before knew nothing thereof. Why? Because God knew that once they got in the land... The enemies would want it back. Are you listening? The enemies want it back. 
And they will try everything, including subversion, slipping in as friends. To subvert God's working in your life. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at least such as before knew nothing thereof. Namely, five, lord, five lords of the Philistines are death. They represent death. And number five represents death. And I promise you, God is training you how to deal with death because you're going to face your own one of these days. And all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon under the entering in of Hamath. And they were there to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. God left them there. Psalm 34, 11, Come ye children, hearken unto me and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Mom, how did you teach Melissa and I the fear of mom? Mom's, mom would say, give me your belt. And she would have to clench her teeth so they wouldn't fall out while she's talking to me. Give me your belt. And that was back in the 70s when we wore those wide leather belts with the little metal rings in it. And I didn't get three. I got them until I crawled over the other side of the bed. Why? Because my mom got into sin. And it almost killed her. And she said, I'm not going to let that happen to my children. And that's why, girls, listen to your daddy. This is why daddy said... You watch out for them. Can we go to their house? No, you cannot go to their house. That's why daddy said that. Daddy still says it. You'll say it to your children. Listen, if all of a sudden some guy come in this church and you could just tell by the way he acted that he was after the children here. Who's in here is going to let, the, to let your kids go over to the man's house? You're crazy if you do. We had a situation like that. Not with a man and it wasn't quite that way. But there was somebody here that we were going, you're not going to their house. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6 And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house And when thou talkest by the way And when thou liest down And when thou risest up Four, four things here Matthew, Mark, Luke, John You teach your children the gospel way And let, hey Can I give some good advice To you moms and dads Clean up your mouth Quit talking dirty in front of your kids or to your kids. Quit cursing your children with your mouth. Cut that stuff out. You're to talk about God. You're to let your children see you read this Bible and know this Bible and live by this Bible. That's what your children are looking for. Is mom and dad really who they pretend to be on Sunday morning? Psalm 132, verse 12. If thy children will keep my covenant, my testimony, that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Now he's talking about the grandkids. So I say this again to my children. Your children are going to grow up and give you grandchildren. And look around in this world. I, I am sick to death with worry over my grandkids and what they have to face in this world. And I want my children right with God so that my grandchildren sit on the throne. You know what that means? You say, well, we're not kings. Oh, yes, we are. We're going to come back and reign with Jesus Christ. And I want Liam and... 
Gwenny Darling and Roland the Poland. I want them all sitting on thrones with Jesus Christ one of these days. And maybe Jaden too. And Michaela. And Uriah. Who else? And Journey. And Adeline. And Huey Dewey Louie up in Iowa. Man, I'm getting where I can't name them all. I want them all sitting on thrones ruling with Christ. That's what I want for my grandchildren. Psalm 78. Turn there and I'm going to let you go. Am I going to let you go? No? Yeah, I better. Yeah, I am. I'm going to let you go. Because I got something coming up next week. It's going to be hard. Psalm 78. Boy, it's coming down good. You know what that snow is? That's God's doctrine coming down. Coming down to us. You know, you've heard me mention my family in this message and in other messages. I've known preachers who let their kids be hellions. And their kids destroyed daddy's work. My, my pastor, the one I was closest to, most of his kids are nowhere near God. And I'm not doing this for my reputation. I preach to them for theirs. And it wouldn't be right if I let my children get away and I just tried to nail everybody else. So I'm not trying to be overbearing. If anything, you guys know me, when I'm really down, I run and hide. But every now and then, I have to sit them down and say, we need to have a talk. That's what daddies do. Because that's what God does. Psalm 78 verse 1, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. You know what that means? Lean in God's direction. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their generation, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done. It is our job, moms and dads, to show how God works. Can I tell you, by example, the best way to show how God works? Can I tell you how to do that? Let them see you fail. My mom didn't do everything right. There were times I saw my mom down at the altar. But she made sure her children were in Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. We had to miss the wonderful world of Disney. Every Sunday night we had to miss it. Wednesday night, five nights revival service, quarterly meeting, youth camp. That's where I was saved. She made sure that her children heard the gospel. And we saw, we saw our mom struggle with issues. And we saw our mother come into Jesus with it. And it taught us something. Even though she never said to us, this is what you do. God let us see it in her life. And she did right. 
Because believe it or not, moms and dads, your children probably know more about you than you want them to know. Everybody's getting all red in the face now. Ooh. Verse 5, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. Jacob was a daddy to 13 children. Sounds like Lorinda Hoggard, doesn't it, mama? Raising 13 children on a sharecropping farm. Ardell, Burnell, Raynell, WL, and L, Odell, Udell, Marcel, the Ledbetters. No, it's the Hoggards. It was Amer, Epom, Onus, Jesse Doyne. I don't know where they got these names. But they raised them on the Bible. They raised them on the Bible. So, verse, he, which he commanded our fathers that they should make known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Jaden, sit down. I'm not done. Sit down. Thank you. That's a good boy. When my son was born, God really dealt with me hard, hard. Mike, it's time you grow up. And I remember one day on my face before God crying, asking God for my son's sake. Help me. Teach me to do right. For my son's sake. God is still answering that prayer. Because I'm not done learning to be right. And we never stop learning. God never stops training us. Because the last enemy that we'll ever face is death. And I've been with God's people in this church in their last days. And they fought with honor. They fought with victory in sight. They fought with joy as they faced the last enemy that shall be destroyed. And all of them said, I'm ready. That's what I want to say. I want to say, I'm ready. But right now I'm going, God, this is going to hurt. I don't want to die. Because I, yeah, I got electrocuted once and that, that messed me up. And the next one, I, it's going to bother me for a long time. Even in eternity, it's going to kill me. So God, I'd rather not do that. See, God's still got to train me yet to get ready for it. So that I'll say, God, I'm ready. Amen. Teach your children that. God's teaching you that. Let him teach it to you. Don't fight him. Don't rebel against him. Don't be a son of Belial. Don't be, here's the word, don't be a bastard. Let God train you. Let him train you. Amen? Let's pray. I want you to bow your head and I want you to spend a minute with God. And I want you to list off for God 10 of your biggest sins and hang-ups. Just make a list in your mind. And then give that list to God and say, God, this is what I think I need done. You can add to it or take away from it as you see fit. But God, I, I'm tired of getting beat by the devil. I'm tired of it. I can't, I can't keep going like this. 
And I want you to teach me how to fight. Because nobody's going to fight them for me. Just me and you, God. Because I'm tired of losing. Father, I come before you today. and I love my family. I love my girls. And I'd do anything in the world for any of them. I would give a kidney. I'd give a heart to them. I love my sons. I'm proud of my boys. They're learning. They're trying to do right. They've found out that they have enemies that they can't defeat by themselves. And what little I've done to train them isn't enough. They need you. All my children need you to teach them how to fight. Not fight each other. Fight the devil. Break that bow of steel. Fight for their children. Because if they don't, the price is too high to pay. Father, bless my church. These are your children. And teach them, Father, how to fight. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to turn the pages in the Bible. Get it open and read it. Believe it. Trust it. Let it be the guide to their life. Father, just bless those who are listening and watching. And help us, Father, to train our children, our grandchildren, our church members, ourselves, so that we can face that last enemy and say to you, God, I'm ready. Like Paul said, now is the time of my departing. I've fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. There is now therefore laid up for me a crown of life. I want to be like Paul. Father, bless the message. Bless the word. Be, be with these people, Lord, as they go home. Keep them all safe. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said.